What's going on guys? So in this video I'm just going to be addressing a question I got on my last video which was a two year progress video which I'm going to assume most of you have probably watched by now and if you haven't you definitely need to go check that out. But it displayed my progression over the past two years and compared my physique at three weeks out from my competition in 2011 to my physique at three weeks out from my competition this year which was back in May. And I got a great question from somebody who asked what were some of the changes I made that allowed me to make the progress I did in that span of time. And I definitely can't underemphasize the fact that after my competition in 2011, that was the very first time since I started competing that I took a whole over a year off from uh, cutting down and competing. I competed in July of 2011 and didn't compete again until May of 2013 and didn't start cutting down for that competition until like mid-January of 2013. So I took a very extensive off-season and I devoted it fully to putting on mass and making the necessary improvements that I wanted to accentuate the next time I got on stage. So after my competition in July of you know 2011, um, I slowly transitioned into a uh, reverse diet and I was increasing my calories slowly. I was staying very lean but I got to a point like about like three or four months after the competition where I didn't feel like I was making much progress. I kind of stagnated. I was still like 149 pounds so I started increasing my calories more aggressively. And to make a long story short, somehow in the midst of that off season, I ended up in full blown dirty bulk mode, and I got a lot heavier that off season than I probably would have liked or anticipated. <coughs> uh, some of you probably saw like one of my other transformation videos, which showed me at the peak of that off season, at like 175 pounds. You know, my body fat was pretty high. Um, I remember looking at those photos at the time, saying to myself, you know, I'm still kind of lean. You can still see a little bit of separation in my quads. My abs are barely visible. But I look at those photos now and I'm like, man, how did I let myself get so fat? But <laughs> anyway, I don't necessarily advocate dirty bulking. Um, I don't think it's nece it was necessary for me to get quite that heavy in order to make the gains that I did. But I could definitely attribute uh, some of the results that I've made to that extended off season where I was just focused on uh, you know, progressing in strength and just putting on size. And sometimes a hiatus from competing or a hiatus from dieting down or being lean is very beneficial to your long-term progress. I know aesthetics is a new thing now. Everybody wants to be aesthetic. But uh, sometimes it is necessary to sacrifice a little bit of your ab definition to actually make some progress. And another thing, and I can't harp on this enough, is after my competition in 2011, that's when I decided to make the switch to training each body part twice per week. You guys know I'm an advocate of higher frequency training for bodybuilding. Prior to that, I was doing the typical bodybuilding split, hitting each muscle group you know, once per week. And I'm nothing against that if that's what you like. And you're putting forth your absolute best effort each day, then the results are going to yield to you. You know, I've done both, and in my experience, I feel like the higher frequency training has yielded the best results. Um, would I have gotten the same results in that extensive off season hitting each muscle group once per week? I don't know, but the one thing I do know is that I enjoyed the higher frequency training split better. And sometimes that makes all the difference. You know, the legs push pull split uh, is becoming a little more popular now. Now I've been doing it for like over two years now, so I can definitely attest to the effectiveness of it. You know, at the time, I was just looking for a way to integrate my passion for both powerlifting and bodybuilding into you know one program to help me progress in both. And I thought about doing the traditional linear periodization split. Uh, where they have you like training in phases like one week you'll be doing like heavy heavy stuff the next week you'll be doing lighter work and the only thing I didn't like about that is the amount of time after each training phase that you went without training that particular biomotor capacity again so I ended up coming across an article by Lane Norton where he was detailing his fat program which was basically a powerlifting bodybuilding hybrid and that's when I decided to go ahead and try a legs push pull split three days on one day off 
where I would be uh, hitting each body part twice per week with one strength day and one hypertrophy day. And I definitely, you know, tweaked some things along the way that to accommodate my needs and how my body was responding, but I really just like that training split much better. It allowed me to, you know, focus on all of my goals. And I just want to encourage everybody to maintain an open mind. Um, don't be so afraid of change. Don't become so attached to one thing. Even if you try something different and it, and it doesn't give you the results you're looking for, you can always revert back to what you were doing. So I would definitely say that's one of the biggest changes that I made that has helped me. And obviously there are other things that you can point to, like some intangible elements like my focus, drive, and desire to be the best I can be. Those have all improved uh, accumulatively and you definitely can't you know, undermine the importance of those. But these are just a couple of the, the concrete things I can point to that have helped me you know, over the past two years to make the progress that I did. So that's all for this video guys. Thanks for watching.